Now we continue with the next speaker. I wish to thank the organizing committee for the honor to be able to participate uh, as a chairwoman. As a woman who has breastfed two uh, children and who has worked in 30 years in the NHS, uh, where I could have a role in the propagation of uh, lactation and breastfeeding, I fully congratulate such initiatives and, and I welcome the Hellenic Breastfeeding Association of Greece. And I wish to say that it is a great honor for me to be able to uh, introduce Mr. Liosis, uh, head of the Elena Venizelos uh, Hospital who is responsible for the promotion of breastfeeding. I know him since my early days as a specialist. Uh, he was, let's say, my professor, my teacher. He has done a lot, uh, Dr. Yossis, and we constantly uh, consult Dr. Yossis. Comments of microphone cannot be translated. Ask Dr. Yossis to use a microphone. Thank you. Comments of microphone. Now, there is a trend which is changing in uh, breastfeeding, but please be vigilant because there are important interests uh, who create obstacles, and I believe that there is a, a huge uh, reaction and battle against breastfeeding, so you need to be very vigilant. So to continue from what Mr. Grigorakis said, as uh, mothers who the advice uh, she wants and tends to help the character of the infant. This is how she should also preserve and protect uh, and help evolve and program the human body in the defense uh, against uh, uh, infections. And I dare to say that the bridge of communication between mother and children is uh, milk. And of course, we see that the, the breast milk is the best possible nutrient for newborns, for this initial period of life of, a new, of an infant. That's the only nutrient the newborn gets. So the quantity of breast milk reflects 200 million years of symbiosis between the producers, in, in other words, women, and of course, infants. Now, we see that there's a great difference between the different type of milk in various mammals. And this, of course, reflects the history of different species in, of course, the millions of years of the evolution of human beings. And, of course, it also has to do with the different uh, social and environmental relations. Well, uh, we can see the so-called uh, Christophora Cristata, who uh, breastfed only for five days and they need to get a huge quantity of uh, lipids in order to be able to have uh, this outer part of the body which helps them evolve and of course survive in these adverse environmental areas. But of course, uh, the more advanced mammals and especially uh, men have uh, a more, uh, less rapid development and of course we see different a type of milk. And of course, uh, this differs from mammal to mammal, as I said, but from woman to woman, it, there is also a great difference. So we see uh, the difference between bridge between child and mother. When we have a premature baby, mother has greater percentage of uh, calories and proteins. And of course, our, all of these are important because a premature bo baby, and we're talking about really premature babies, have a rapid growth. On this slide, you can actually see on the left side, it is an Eregard uh, study in 2011, which showed as far as the first week of the life of a newborn, for every 10 calories per kilo that uh, we do not offer to the newborn, we have a decrease of 4.2 units of the uh, neurodevelopmental de evolution. And of course, for every decrease of one gram per kilogram, we have 8.2 units decrease of the neurodevelopmental evolution. So we see that how everything was created wisely. Now, World Health Organization and UNICEF proposed lately that there should be an intervention, there is intervention, 
which is of low cost and can actually uh, uh, affect 800 eight uh, 2013 deaths of children, can increase the IQ of uh, infants, can also decrease the risk of obesity, the risk of metabolic syndrome, and also decrease the uh, existence of uh, diseases of the gastrointestine in the whole lifespan. Different inflammatory diseases, and of course, can also decrease the possibility of some types of uh, cancer, of leukemia or CNS cancers. All of these are, can happen with intensification of uh, breastfeeding and breast milk and the use of breast milk. So studies promoted a question that was quite pertinent. For the last 20 years, we were thinking, why 20 years ago children, premature children used to die, less than 100 grams, I mean, and now they tend to live at a great extent. So it seems that the answer to the question is the effect of human milk. It seems that the knowledge helped us understand that uh, feeding a premature baby uh, through the first day of uh, its birth can actually help this newborn to be able to survive uh, and avoid any consequence, of course, which is, of course, inflations and uh, uh, necrotizing enterocolitis. So you can see on the slide how we have uh, some inflammation that happened in hospitals who do receive formula against the ones who receive uh, breast milk. So we see the difference also between the necrotizing enterocolitis, between formula and breast milk. And also, this is insulin dependent. We can actually see on this slide uh, that um, the postnatal age of the survival estimate when it receives more than 100 ml of breast milk is 100%. Moreover, let me say that it seems that uh, breast milk does not only protect uh, when it is uh, in the hospital, the newborn, but it also helps help uh, avoid having any other infections during the first uh, period of its life. And we can see, the, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, some important decrease of infections uh, to infants who are breastfed against infants who are not breastfed during the first 12 months of life. Now, in this great study, the meta-analysis, referring to the effect of human milk on cognitive function, it seems that children who are breastfed have also an increased IQ. And of course, uh, this is about 2% to 5% uh, for the premature babies against different studies. But as far as premature babies are concerned, who, due to the prematurity, they have a low IQ against others. It seems that uh, the percentage of having a higher, higher IQ is 5 to 8 percent if they are breastfed. Moreover, let me say that uh, uh, breast milk uh, protects the human body. And we see that the different uh, medical conditions, as Mr. Grigorek said, are much lower for metabolic syndrome of uh, Kiliokakis and equally the different uh, tumors and, of course, leukemia. Now, the question is why um, we have uh, all these positive effects from breastfeeding. It seems uh, that now we tend to understand this whole issue, but, of course, there are much more that we need to learn. There is a critical period which is, of course, pregnancy, where factors such as uh, nutrition or diabetes or gestational diabetes and uh, some other situations which are related to the environment might affect not just the human development of uh, the newborn, but also its cognitive and, of course, emotional development. And, of course, we can see, for example, uh, according to the forms of endocrinology, uh, it has to do with the uh, diet of uh, pregnant women. But of course, the first months after the birth are also crucially important and is a crucial period that will and shall affect the further development of human beings. This period is seen as a critical period of development. These biological phenomena where some factors 
in this critical window of development of the infant might affect uh, its development is defined as uh, developmental plasticity. And this is related to a biological phenomenon which helps the infant and the newborn to be able to adapt in the environmental changes and be able to have some future experiences. Now, it seems that milk and the main positive consequence of milk are uh, on the gene itself, on themselves. So we see that uh, different uh, environments might have uh, some uh, epigenetic uh, uh, consequences with a different biological or behavioral changes that might affect not just the life of the person, him or herself, but also uh, the life of its offspring. So epigenetics is a new uh, division or the department of biology which tries to study how these above mentioned factors create changes in the operation of different uh, genes by uh, having an activation or overactivation or deactivation of genomes without disrupting the cellular DNA. So we see that the major epigenetic changes happen through the methylosis of the DNA. Uh, through the methylosis of histones and also through the non-codified microRNAs. Over here we can see a methylosis that happens in the DNA, whereas here we see the transformation of uh, uh, the epigenetic home where histones are proteins which work as uh, barrels where the DNA is disrupted. So whenever we have a great compl a complicated DNA or we see a relaxation of DNA, we might have these epigenetic changes which might affect an overactivation or a deactivation of the genomes. It seems that another important axis between mother and child or mother and newborn is the antibodies that mother offers to children through milk. As you know, there are specific cells that enter the mucus of the mother and try to trace antibody stimuli against pathogenetic organisms that may be present in the colon of the mother. So we send those stimuli uh, to the laboratories to um, produce uh, plasmatocytes that in turn produce uh, antibodies. And these antibodies are the levers of defense of uh, the neonate. An important antibody is the IgA, uh, which the neonate uh, um, has, uh, especially the colostrum. It is included in the colostrum. Some recent studies uh, showed that this specific uh, element through the epigenetics uh, leads to the activation of genes that remain in the colon, in the intestine for ever and fight against uh, inflammation and infection, uh, inflammation such as, for example, the celiac disease. Another factor are the oligosaccharides, which are um, found in uh, the mother's milk and uh, help fight against inflammations. Their composition is such that they are able to actually fool the uh, the germs and thwart them from entering the body uh, of the mother or the neonate. Uh, some of those also favor the development, the proper development of the brain. Uh, the, the mother's milk uh, also includes uh, the, some fatty uh, uh, elements, uh, some fatty acids that contribute to render our organism even stronger and especially our brain. There are 700 different proteins 
in a mother's milk, some of nutritional value and some of a dual value, uh, also helping the defense of our body, of our organism. Let's see the action of lactalbumin, which is a very important tool uh, of protein. It is linked uh, through um, calcium uh, uh, with the colon of the neonate, uh, leading to the creation of hamlet, uh, which uh, fights against uh, cancer cells. Mrs. Hasiotu, whom I met uh, two years ago, a very, very young but also very uh, important uh, researcher, found that there are many different stem cells in uh, the mother's milk. And we know what the role of stem cells uh, is. So their action may be very important in replacing cells that have been damaged. And many studies are underway currently in China where we have children with uh, cerebral uh, uh, problem, problems uh, and they have proven to be quite significant such cells and they have uh, produced some very promising results. Then we have very good results against cancer and we know that uh, children uh, who breastfeed uh, have a lower risk of developing cancer in the future, but the same goes for the mother. Then there is another study on the future use of uh, stem cells of a mother's uh, milk uh, through biotechnology for tissue regeneration. Then yet another important action of the milk is that it helps uh, the uh, uh, growth, the development of uh, a normal um, flora because we know there is a constant fight in the colon between germs when the first germs colonizing the colon are germs of the physiological flora then this uh, this 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 preempts uh, uh, the presence of pathogens and we have a better coexistence um, when uh, we use formula, then uh, we have uh, problems. We have problems leading to a, a series of uh, pathological cases, both uh, for the neonate and the adult. During pregnancy, during gestation, many important changes take place in the mother's body, favoring the growth of such uh, flora and the transfer from that flora to uh, the child. There are some, there are the DC cells and the uh, 18 cells and they uh, throw their nets and they try to fish germs uh, and they send them to the breast and from the breast to the milk and this is how dysbiosis is uh, created. Here we see a series of factors affecting the growth of uh, uh, microbial uh, flora leading to problems. Here we see the influence of the milk, of the mother's milk, in the development of that flora. Uh, the rather, neonates who breastfeed uh, do not have uh, such pathogens. Uh, and here we see how important, how important and how useful and beneficial this growth of uh, physiological flora is and uh, on the contrary how harmful for our body uh, pathogens can be. Here we see a model uh, showing uh, the epigenetic action I have been describing. Um, we see that children who breastfeed are uh, have uh, bifidobacteria, uh, who ha which have metabolites like all germs. Uh, the uh, folate, uh, folic acid, is the main metabolite which promotes the DNA methylation, leading to um, gene transcription uh, and such genes. 
uh, if they hadn't been uh, obstructed, uh, they would have caused the metabolic syndrome. So we realize the importance of that. Uh, on the contrary, uh, children who use formula um, have uh, 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 the butyric acid, uh, but, but, butyric acid, and. Uh, Permanent metabolic changes, unfortunately, leading to uh, the metabolic syndrome. Another action of uh, the mother's milk is through the R RNA. Uh, uh, the RNA in extracellular uh, cysts uh, and recent studies uh, show that this is a bridge of communication between the cells of the mother and the cells of uh, the baby. And through that bridge, important functions of the body of the neonate are uh, being promoted and managed and regulated. Some uh, paths uh, having to do with uh, the cellular growth, uh, division, apoptosis, and so on and so forth. Uh, the immune system is also affected, meaning is also helped, and uh, the B cells uh, and the differentiation of the B cells uh, is also affected. There is a debate on and lots of studies on uh, the colon brain, uh, the intestine brain axis and connection. There seems to be uh, an interaction between the two organs. Uh, with stress, uh, we have the production we have a production of substances that affect our colon and uh, this happens in a plethora of ways leading to a reduced mobility in our intestine in our colon a reduced production of mucus and all the above uh, happen through the uh, vagus nerve on the other hand, uh, the, this whole uh, the the colon affects uh, the brain through the neurotransmitters, the hormones, and the metabolites. And here we see the extent to which, rather, how Im how important dysbiosis is for the appearance of mental issues. Factors causing dysbiosis, such as nutrition, antibiotics, uh, birth, and so on and so forth, uh, lead to problems through this axis between the intestine and the brain. Uh, because the formation of myelin in the prefrontal lobe is, uh, is uh, blocked. And the specific area is of paramount importance for the for our body uh, because it is inextricably inextricably linked to memory issues, cognitive issues, other behavior problems, and serious mental issues such as schizophrenia, uh, depression, and autism. It seems that. Uh, uh, the mother's milk favors communication and thwarts inflammation, reduces inflammation, thus uh, putting an end to uh, the harmful stimuli from our colon to the brain. Let me become even more specific. Look at the colon of a neonate, uh, well developed, an excellent connection between the cells, all the defensive mechanisms are active. Let's see what happens in a child below 1,000 uh, grams. The, uh, there, are, there are issues because there are perforations. There are perforations and germs go through. And through the ischemia that such children often present, often manifest, we are, they are often led to necrosis. And we know that an immature such uh, uh, organ um, uh, 
reacts badly to inflammation, we have the secretion of uh, pre-inflammatory uh, cytosines, uh, cytosines which uh, reach our brain and subsequently lead to the damages and the disorders I mentioned earlier. Now, what are the other factors that lead to the uh, growth and the development of uh, pathological flora, an, an, a non-complete uh, organ. Uh, in that case, we are obliged to um, stop uh, breastfeeding. Rather, we used to stop breastfeeding, and uh, such uh, babies, unfortunately, in the past uh, died. Then there are some other issues. The cesarean uh, section, uh, for example, is another problem. And other issues, uh, the therapies uh, with antibiotics and formulas lead to dysbiosis and uh, thus to all the aforementioned uh, other problems. This is a model showing what happens in a premature uh, baby. Uh, we see on the right uh, an, a normal neonate breastfeeding, normal uh, physiological uh, flora, uh, the axis between the brain and the colon is lormon, and so on and so forth. On the other side, we have a premature baby uh, that was brought to light through the caesarean section, uh, drinking formula leading to dysbiosis with a necrotic or necrotizing enterocolitis went under sur surgery uh, with disorders uh, in the axis between the brain and the colon leading to cerebral uh, paralysis and to other issues such as schizophrenia and autism. So over the past years we keep seeing more and more studies proving that epigenetic actions, the epigenetic actions exerted on the child may lead to serious disorders, not on the child itself, but also for five generations to come. So the epigenetic action is uh, important also for uh, future generations. So the only solution that we have is breastfeeding. Thank you. We thank Mr. Yossis very much for his excellent presentation. We have uh, a few minutes for two questions. You've been very clear, apparently, uh, Mr. Yassis. Thank you very much.